Hey y'all, TRG here, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be going over my 2025 tornado season forecast and how active this tornado season may be, whether or not it will be an above average or a below average season. Let's go right on into this season's forecast. Let's start with the official Climate Prediction Center seasonal outlook for March, April, and May. If you look on the left side of your screen, you'll see they've outlined a large area for above average temperatures across much of the United States for the March, April, and May timeframe. The more important part of this outlook is on the right hand side of your screen. You'll notice they've highlighted a large area for below average precipitation across much of the southern Rockies, this could lead towards a couple limited severe weather threats. If you look at the top right corner, you'll see an above average chance for precipitation across much of the Midwest and Ohio Valley. That may lead towards a slightly more active tornado season across those areas. We'll get into that a little later. Whenever forecasting for seasons, you want to use this. This is the official NOAA CPC Enzo Probability Outlook. This one in particular was issued in February 2025. Now, obviously, we're forecasting tornado season, so we want to look at these two graphs right in here. This is for the time frame of March, April, May, and June. If you notice here, look at the top right, we have three main phases, La Nina, Neutral, and El Nino. Obviously, we are currently in a very weak La Nina, but as we specifically head into April, May, and June, that will most likely transition more into a neutral phase. Now here is what that looks like on your sea surface temperature anomalies. This blue is obviously more of a weak La Nina. However, notice how we're starting to see more warmer temperatures move off the coastline of South America. That's going to continue to transition us into a very weak El Nino, most likely more of into a neutral phase going into your tornado season as this takes a very long time to transition. Another thing that's very important for your tornado season, extremely important, is your goal. Your gulf is currently above average. That means more moisture, more instability, more thunderstorms. That's going to contribute to a lot more active of a tornado season as if the gulf was more cool. What does an El Nino and La Nina mean for tornado season? As you could see here on the top, an El Nino typically leads towards a more southern jet stream. This allows for more moisture in the southern tier of the United States and typically could actually increase the potential for severe weather in a given El Nino year. If you look at La Nina, typically our jet stream goes a little bit further on the northern side of things this could still lead towards a substantial severe weather season. However, it's not as common. It will typically lead towards a more dry southern United States, as you have obviously seen in the CPC outlook, as we're still in that weak La Nina. What does this mean for tornado season? Well, we're heading into a Enzo neutral phase. This means we'll see something generally like this. However, we're going into tornado season. So this area of warmer temperatures will extend across more of the Midwestern United States, maybe into the central U.S. and especially into the Tennessee Valley as well with that area of above average precipitation definitely expanding more into the central United States, Midwestern U.S., and Northeastern United States. Now, we will have a drought as well because we're still in a La Nina transitioning into a neutral phase, so expect below average precipitation across the western side of the U.S. as we saw the CPC graphic show. Our Pacific jet stream will probably be somewhere around the northern tip of California as we're in between that La Nina and neutral phase. Before we go on into the rest of this season's forecast, I ask that you guys hit that like button, share this video with your family, friends, social media, and also hit that subscribe button with the notification bell set to all so you know when I go live or upload a video as these videos take a long time to make. Let's go right back on into this season's forecast. Now let's go on into some SPC graphics. This is based off of data of over the last 29 years that the SPC has gathered. And this is your tornado probabilities around for the month of February. The greatest threat for severe weather in the month of February is typically focused around portions of the far south central United States and we could also see some severe weather threats as far north as the southern midwestern United States in a general month of February. Now that won't do us much good since we're literally on the last day of February. Here's tornado probabilities for March. You can see they extend across all areas. The threat for tornadoes also goes a little bit more north closer to much of the midwestern United States a little bit more northwest into the central U.S. as well. April's when it really begins to kick off as probabilities increase rapidly across portions of Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana, and the threat for tornadoes increases and moves drastically further to the north. April is one of our more active months, but May is the most active time frame for severe weather in the U.S. You can see tornado probabilities are typically the highest across portions of the central United States, mainly over portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, into northern Texas, with a second area 
area of potential hotspot going over portions of Illinois and Indiana. Then as we go into June, this shifts a little bit more north into the northern central United States, going as far north as the greatest probabilities into portions of North Dakota, and the highest probabilities actually focused over northeastern Colorado in late June. Then into July, tornado season begins to die down as we only have lower end probabilities across portions of the north central U.S. And now I finally get to show you guys my 2025 tornado season forecast in the mini graphs I have prepared for you. Really quick, I have to note these graphs are my thoughts and my thoughts alone, and they've been made based off of the hours of research I've done behind the scenes. So please, when consulting for official information, please consult the National Weather Service and other officials for the best information. So let's start off with March. So for March, I've highlighted areas from the southern Midwestern United States through much of the southern and southeastern U.S. for the highest chance of severe weather, with the absolute highest chance for severe weather mainly focused over portions of Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana. This may look a little familiar because we actually are tracking the threat for severe weather on March 4th in much of these regions. This graph was made about a week ago, so in my opinion, this is verifying pretty well so far. I've also outlined an area for below average chances of severe weather across much of Kansas into Oklahoma as well as into much of Texas. This is for the below average chance of any severe weather to occur. You don't see much severe weather here, but even for this year, the chance is going to be below average. And to the month of April, this changes a lot. The threat for severe weather drastically moves north-northeast, with more colors being introduced over portions of the southern United States. I have very high confidence that we will see multiple threats for significant severe weather across portions of the Tennessee Valley into the south-central United States and southern-southeastern Midwestern U.S., with a below average tornado season across much of the plains in the United States. I doubt we will see much severe weather in portions of Kansas or into much of Oklahoma. I have left this little red area here, which is still a chance for severe weather, but most likely it won't be any above average chance over Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska because April does see severe weather in the plains. It doesn't matter if it looks like the most inactive season for the Great Plains in history. There's still going to be a chance for severe weather if you live in those areas. However, for the more west regions like western Oklahoma into Texas and New Mexico as well as into Colorado, that area I think has a very low chance to see severe weather in April. Then moving on into May, this has changed quite a lot as well. Again, I've left that area of red on the eastern side of the Great Plains because you still see severe weather in May. However, I've moved that region of greatest chance for severe weather a little bit more to the north and to the east across portions now of into Indiana and into Kentucky with also a much larger area of below average chance for severe weather across a very large area of the Great Plains, including much of Texas, a good chunk of Oklahoma, a good chunk of Kansas, much of Nebraska into South Dakota and North Dakota. And I've also included that area of greater severe weather chance all the way into portions of the Carolinas, most of the Carolinas, I should say, also as far south as into northern Florida for a chance of severe weather. Then as we go on into June, I've actually highlighted two very different areas for the potential of severe weather. I've actually highlighted one out here in Virginia and North Carolina because that area of greater precipitation with what we typically see in neutral phases normally will increase the just the overall threat for rain in Virginia and North Carolina, which may increase the chance for severe weather. And then I obviously do believe we will still continue with our more Midwestern United States threat for severe weather in most of the central and northeastern United States, with the exception of the Great Plains area. You'll notice for June, I have shifted that area of well below average chance for severe weather more to the east. That's because Oklahoma has a lesser chance for severe weather in June, so I'm not as confident in seeing severe weather in June as far west as, you know, say, most of central Oklahoma. So I think this is pretty good outlook for June. June is quite the wild card for severe weather, though, but this is just the graph I came up with. We'll see how it verifies towards the end of June. Then as we go into July, I've taken off most of the higher end colors for the greatest chance of severe weather. I've mainly outlined portions of the Midwestern U.S. That's just for the chance of remnant severe weather with just a very large area of a chance for severe weather across much of the United States. Now, this doesn't have like a specific probability behind it. It's just generally who has the best chance for severe weather in July. And also, I have continued that large area of below average chances for severe weather across much of the Great Plains area into portions of 
the uh, far eastern Rockies as well. So we'll see how that verifies in July, but generally the greatest probabilities. I did think about putting a pink back over in portions of the Midwestern US, but my confidence just isn't high enough to know what's going to happen in just to interrupt my graphics for a second, take a look at the average annual numbers of tornadoes per state from 2004 to 2023. Get a pretty good look at this because this is what you'll be comparing to my tornado season forecast for every state in just a couple of seconds. The greatest area for tornadoes is typically Texas due to it being a larger state as well as out there in Kansas. Those are your two highest states for tornado counts. Now, here is one of the big ones. This is the number of tornadoes that I personally predict for 2025. And you'll know Noticed, I am quite above average over Dixie Alley into the central portions of the United States, just barely outside of the Great Plains. And much of the actual Great Plains are well below average for tornado season, specifically well below average for Kansas, Colorado, and then about 10 tornadoes below average for portions, or rather the state of Texas. The greatest chance for tornadoes is definitely going to be focused over Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Generally in that area, I have outlined there. And then, of course, I do want to just note I've also increased chances for tornadoes out here in Virginia and North Carolina. North Carolina could have an extremely active tornado season. I would not be surprised with well above average tornado season out there if you live in North Carolina. Also have to note, again, Dixie Alley. I've actually increased those numbers quite a bit. We did not see many Dixie Alley tornadoes uh, last year. We were very well below average, but this year I think it's going to be a little different. I think the typical tornado numbers in Mississippi and Alabama are about 65 every year. Georgia, I think, is around 40, so I've gone about 10 above average for you guys. Florida, also about 10 above average. Northeastern U.S., I think you guys will be slightly above average, if not average for tornado season. And then much of the western U.S., I didn't know what to put there, so I just kept you guys at average for tornado season. So, um, not really, I, I didn't really put much research into the Western U.S. for tornado season, but yeah, that's my, uh, that's my numbers right there. If you need to pause it for more time, go right ahead and do so. I'm going to move on over to this graph. I'm going to move my face cam here to the top left. So this is the average tornadoes per year, which is around 1,300 in the United States. In 2024, we had a very active tornado season, pretty much as high as you can get. I think the only day that was, or rather the only year that was higher than this was 2004, if I'm not mistaken. So we actually got 1,790 plus tornadoes last year. 2023, we got around 1,423. 2022, we got around 1,330. 2011, we got around 1,630. For this year, I am predicting we see 1,400 to 1,455 tornadoes, with my dead-on number being 1,425 tornadoes in 2025. I have included two more numbers. You'll notice them at the bottom left in the bottom right corner of your screen. Bottom left, that is what I think is the high-end number for this year. That 1,525 to 1,575 is the high end I believe this year could produce, and and the low end is 1,250 to 1,325. And that is it for the 2025 tornado season forecast. Again, I put hours of research behind this. this. was definitely the most I've researched throughout any of our season forecasts. And uh, we'll see how this verifies towards the end of the year. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream that I do. Stay safe and watch the severe weather. Goodbye.